giving God the glory worldwide. You're watching the Gospel America Network. another session, another teaching, another prayer time with our Heavenly Father, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And thank you for joining me for another session surrounded by angels with the anointed Word of God. We're here together, we're gathered together so we together can learn, so we together can grow, be stronger in the Word of God. And this is the time that we need to focus more on what Jesus has to say in the times that we are living in right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come before you today. And as we come before you, we choose to come in unity. We come together to your presence in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you've given us the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Father, we believe that the Holy Spirit lives in us. We believe he leads us. He's leading us tonight. Father, we thank you that he talks to us and he gives us guidance and he is guiding us. We thank you. We thank you for your word. Your word is our path. We will allow your word to penetrate very deeply in our hearts. We choose to live in your blessing, Father. As you direct our path, we will establish your word in our hearts. Thank you for moving in our lives. Thank you for directing our path. Thank you for guiding us, teaching us. And Father, we receive every word that pertains to us, your holy word, we receive it gladly. We receive the wisdom that comes with it. We receive the knowledge. We receive the revelation, which is the enlightened word to our path. We thank you, Father. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me one more time at this time we have one hour to spend it with our lord our savior jesus our heavenly father i will be praying and teaching from philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7. it says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God we all have requests all of us do and he wants us to bring it to his attention he wants us to bring our requests to him verse 7 says and the what the what and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard us, will protect us. So we're reading, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And then it says, the peace of God, which path is all understanding. Right here, we either believe it receive it or we can wrestle with that you can wrestle and sit and think well i got this i got that when we do that we are locked in understanding 
there is something that is blocking our God-given understanding through His Word. The peace of God is supernatural. The peace of God can quiet our hearts. The peace of God can keep our minds when it doesn't make any sense to our heads. And it wouldn't even make sense to the people around us. Why not just sit around, receive the Word of God, and take it for what it is? This is supposed to be part of our witness. This is a big part of our witness. Our, this is our light. God is a light. And because we're receiving His light, which comes through His Word, it becomes our light. When everybody else is just panicking, when everybody else is just not having peace, and when everybody else is just stressing out, we have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding surpasses all the stress and the overwhelming things that are happening. And as we put on the peace of God, as we meditate on the peace of God, as we work with that peace of God that only we only get it from God Himself, we will stand out. It's going to make people wonder how do we do that? It will witness the reality of the living God. It'll witness who we are on the inside, according to Scripture. And the Comforter, the Holy Spirit inside of us, the Holy Spirit is directing our lives, is directing our path. We can, we can see that. And if we can see it, other people will also see that. But when we all fall apart, like everyone else, why would they want to even follow that? If we are acting just like the world is, why would anyone would want to follow after that? When we are upset, when we are mad, when we are hurt half of the time, how is that any different? How? Is it any different than what the world lives like? We are supposed to be different. We're supposed to talk different. We're supposed to behave different. We're supposed to look different than the world. God did not give us the Holy Spirit so that we can be the same. We're supposed to be shining with that peace of God, with the joy of God, with the love of God. Why? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear that comes with fear, worry, stress, anxiety. But God has given us the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Sound mind. It sounds like solid, stable peace in the midst of a crazy world. This is not just available to us, it's available to the whole world. Because God so loved the world that he gave himself, Jesus Christ. We are all called to that. If he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, we are all called to live in that peace, to put on that peace, to walk in that peace, and to behave in that peace. It is our call. It is our life. It is our lifestyle. See, it's how Jesus lived here on earth himself as our example. And he says, follow that. Then Philippians 4, 8, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there's any virtue, is there any praise, think, think, 
think on those things. God is telling us what to think on. Think on those things. Think. So we keep seeing that we keep, we keep coming back right to the same things that God is telling us, don't we? How are, we, how are you not going to be troubled and scared and upset? You're going to have to lead what you think and what you feel. Whatever you're thinking on, whatever you're feeling, you're going to have to lead it. And again, what do millions of Christians think about? They think that they can't help it. They think, I've tried, but I can't. Why is it that a Christian tries and they can't? Because what's controlling their thinking it's not God's word. And so whatever is controlling your thinking will control and direct your life and your behavior. So the word of God is not, not leading their thinking. Some other spirits, some other words are controlling their thinking. And so because some other spirit is leading their thinking, when they say, I tried and I can't, that's a lie. Because if that was the truth, why would God say all things, including my thinking, all things, including my behavior, all things, including my vocabulary, all things, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, I can do it through the word. There's no way out. Without the word, I cannot be a victor. Without the word, I will be a victim, a victim of my own thinking, a victim of my own words that are not lining up with the word of God. So in order for me to receive the victory that Jesus has already won for me, I have to partake of his promises and of his word. So... If we believe it, we are more than conquerors. The other way is also true. If you believe the lie that you tried and you can't do it, you're believing a lie and then you're stuck. When you believe the truth, you are victorious. But when you believe a lie, you're stuck. It's a vicious cycle because you're believing a lie. So if you're stuck, you won't be able to break free. With a lie, you will not be able to break free. Jesus says, I am the truth and I am the way. You're only able to break free with the truth, which is the word of God, the promises of God. That brings deliverance from that lies of the enemy. Did he tell us to think on these things? We're going to tell the Lord, in our prayers, I apologize. Sometimes I can't do it, and sometimes I'm able to do it. See, who's going to tell the Lord what you're asking me to do is too hard? It's unfair that some get it and I don't get it. I mean, is anyone going to say that? Or are we going to say, God, I know you said that, but you don't know how many times I tried it and it doesn't work. But I know sometimes I just can't. No, we can't say that to God because what you're saying is he gave you a word that doesn't work. He gave you a promise that God himself broke. No, the Bible says he is not a God that he shall lie. He gave us a list, a list. And if my thoughts do not agree 
with one of them, we are not supposed to think about it. If it's not true, don't think about it. If it's not honest, don't think about it. If it's not just, if it's not fair, if it's not pure, if it's not lovely, I mean, that's eliminating a lot of stuff out of the old way of thinking, right? If it's not a good report, don't think about it. What do we think about? We think about the good report. The bad report doesn't make anything better. It makes things worse. It makes you sick. That's why he says, don't think about that. Don't think on that. We're not saying it's not fair. We're not pretending it does not exist. We're not avoiding it. We're not putting it under our bed or under the rug. We heard it. Yeah, we know it's there. Okay. Once we hear it, we got to release it to God. We got to go to the Lord. We got to go boldly to the throne of grace. And we got to give it to God. He's waiting for us to give it to him. We can't do it on our own. We can't fix it. And do not continue to think on that. Don't think about it. Don't talk about it. Don't look at it. Once we release it to God, one is prayed up, and it is really gone out of your hands, into the hands of the Father that is able to do abundantly above and beyond what we can think or even ask, change the channel. But you can't hide it, though. You can't say, well, you know, I'll pretend it's not there. I'll pretend it didn't happen. I'm just going to, like, put it away. No, that's not faith. We have to present it to God or else our hearts are not going to be at peace. You know it's there. And why does he want us at peace and why does he want us to release it to him? Because when someone is stressed out, when someone is upset, I don't care how cute of a face they have, they're hard to get along with. You cannot get along with the person that is constantly stressed out constantly annoyed, constantly frustrated because that's what they are. They're frustrated and they're going to throw their frustration at you. And you can't get along with a person like that. So this is why God says, give it to me. Come to me. Going back to Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. It didn't say, it didn't say hide it. Pretend it didn't exist. Pretend it didn't happen. No, it says let your request be known unto God. We have to let him know. Well, you can say, well, you know, doesn't God already know? Yes, and that he wants you to come clean. And he also wants you to tell him. Put it in his hand. We can't fix it. He can fix it. That's why he says, come to me. Come boldly before me. If our hearts are upset, and shaken and troubled tell me why is it that way if you are annoyed if you are irritated if you are frustrated why is it that way how did you let it get that way you chose and when you chose what to think on you yield to it you started thinking on things and talking about things that are not on the list that God's given us. So we have a list God's given us. If we start speaking what's not on that list, then we choose to think outside of that. Therefore, we yield to that. Therefore, that is a lie. And therefore, our behaviors will be wrong. So we need to think on what's on that list. We need to go back to the list. We need to refer back to the list. And we need to think on what God tells us to think. So if we were keeping our mind stayed on the Lord and stayed on the list, stay on the scripture, 
how would we be? How would we behave? We will be keeping the word of God in our hearts, and that word in our hearts will be keeping us in perfect peace. If we are not in perfect peace, it's because we're not in agreement with this word, and whenever someone is not in agreement, there is an argument. So don't argue with the word. Don't argue with the answer. You just have not been keeping your mind stayed on what God says to think on. Instead of living in the blessing, we're living in stress, and that's not God's best. So, we are blessed by God. We are supposed to walk in that blessing regardless of what it looks like on the outside. As long as we are blessed on the inside, everything else will be manifested according to how we speak it, declare it, say it. God will make sure that he's on our side. God will make sure that he brings to pass what we're believing. The whole time, that we are stressed the whole time that we are in anxiety. I mean, for no reason, because God can do it for us. My question is, did it help in any way, shape, or form? No, we didn't. Being stressed out, being hurt, being anxious does not help the situation maybe it was a big problem but how did crying complaining being a victim help in any way shape or form did it help in any way how much did it help the situation how much did it help your physical body absolutely nothing it made it worse the body gets sick gotta call the doctor for nothing now you're paying more money because now you're getting bills you were crying because maybe you had a bill to pay now you have other bills because of medical bills so it's a full thing to do to get stressed out and to get upset and to get worried because it doesn't help what it can't help at all and it makes things worse so Philippians 4 9 goes on to say those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you so what do we need to do in every situation, in every challenge. We need the peace of God. We need to call on the peace of God. We need to release it to God and say, this is happening, this is taking place, and we need your peace. We will call on that peace of God. It is the anchor to our soul. It is the anchor to my soul. It keeps us stable and steady when everything around us is going crazy and it makes no sense also jesus in matthew 6 19 goes on to say lay not up for yourself for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20 for Matthew. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. What is Jesus revealing to us here? He is revealing two different systems. 
with two different levels of value and priority. He said in verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, what did Jesus say? Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be afraid. When things are happening and challenges are taking place, we tend to, without even thinking, just to stress and worry and anxiety. So why we've been troubled about things and why were we getting into one of the, the biggest reasons as to why people stress and why people worry? People get upset about many, many things. We shouldn't be getting upset or worried about things that is out of our hands, is out of our our um, reach. People get frustrated, get irritated, get stressed because they don't understand how unimportant things are. The value system is way off and the priorities are wrong. And this is what he is saying here. You're going to see how it flows right now with the rest of the passage. I mean, everything just flows. He said in Matthew 6, 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. It doesn't mean you can't have any investments. It doesn't mean you can't have a savings account. But what it does mean is we need a revelation that this is not very, very important. Um... Every opportunity that we get, we want to transfer our wealth out of the realm of the natural into the realm of the supernatural. Because if you put all your wealth in, uh, in the natural, it's not safe. It will lose its value every hour. He is revealing to us something that is secure. So in Matthew 6, 20, it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And then the question is, for who? This is for ourselves. Just like we would make investment in the natural, he says, put things into an account. It is ours. It's our account. And so the increase would be ours. He's saying this is real, more real than what you see in the natural. So then in verse 20 from Matthew chapter 6 says, before we go in there, the question should be, can this be done? It's been done. How do we do it? How do I do it? We all know with our tithes and our offerings and, 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 and our gifts and our seeds of service and our seeds of our time and, and, and seeds of our talents, anything that we do from a heart of love and faith for God's work, for his people, his things, if we do it genuinely in faith and in love, we are making a deposit. We didn't give it away. We made a deposit. It's not gone. Philippians 4.19 talks about a heavenly account. I have a heavenly account. You have a heavenly account. 419, Philippians 4.19 says, Not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit, the many abound to your account. What account is he talking about? He's talking about an account in heaven. It's a heavenly account. He is not talking about uh, the first bank of Philippa. 
He's talking about an account in heaven. This is a real account. Most people don't believe it. They don't think it's even real. It's not even real to them. But it's a real account. And how do I know this? Because all the words of Jesus Christ are true. So in Matthew 6.20, it tells me that it cannot depreciate there. It cannot be corrupted. The value cannot be diminished or it cannot go under or go, or go low or go down. Nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can devalue it. It is truly secure and you can't lose it. It cannot be devalued. And this is true. So in verse 21 from chapter 6 in Matthew, if this is real to us, what Jesus is saying, if someone were to take our money and our physical money down here, and yet we have investments in heaven that we know that nobody can touch we shouldn't get upset we're not going to be troubled because we didn't lose anything really whatever we think we lost in the natural God has kept it in heaven. It's still ours, untouched. And because we're so focused on things of the natural, our heart was not connected to the treasures of heaven, what we have in our heavenly bank account. We didn't see the investments that we have been making for the kingdom of God. In our heavenly bank account we're looking at the investments that we've been doing here on earth we should focus more on the investments that we've done for the kingdom of God and for the, the things that are waiting in our account so that we can withdraw them more than the things of the earth because in heaven the things are not going anywhere nobody can take them Nobody can take that from us. We can't lose that. And we wouldn't be upset like somebody who has lost things here on earth. And when you see someone that's hurt because something happened to their account and they're hurt, why? Because they were focused on the things here on earth because that's what they were doing that's what they use without utilizing what we have in our heavenly account this was a revelation when you're seeing the impossible and the natural God shows up and he tells you there's a heavenly account is full of possessions that you have not withdrawn yet you need to utilize what's in that account so when we think in terms of I have a heavenly account and it's loaded there's no reason for me to be upset there's no reason for me to get sad now my heart needs to be connected to that system that's a promise from God no one has touched it yet the Lord has given us three big reasons why Christians get upset lack of faith lack of knowing how much God loves us and then lack of loving other people so that we can do the work of God and then wrong priorities. And we need to know what's important, what's really important, and what's really not important.
People every day are getting so upset for stuff. This is why they would go and ask the Lord about it. And the Lord says, do not allow your heart to be troubled. Even if it's a big deal. Even if it's a big deal to us. We need to release that to God. We need to develop our own value system. We need to let somebody to tell us what our value system is. And that somebody, that someone, the one. Because there's only one who is qualified to tell us. And this is important or if not important. It's Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. The written word of God directs us, tells us if this is important or if it's not important. We should focus on what God tells us. We should focus on that word of God. And we need to do something with that word, put it into practice. God is telling us, don't worry. Don't let things bother you. Don't let things bother you in your head. He is telling us where your treasure is. What? Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if it's a big treasure, if it's a big treasure to us, and if it's important to us, then if we're not getting it, or if it's in danger, or something is not right with it, we don't need to get upset. We have an account in heaven. And we don't need to allow our hearts to be troubled. The question is, do we need to allow our hearts to be troubled? The answer is no. Jesus clearly says, do not allow your hearts to be troubled. The ungodly people are the ones that have the wrong treasure in their hearts and they for, therefore they get upset. TV shows teach kids at a young age to get upset. We need to learn from Jesus not to get upset, not to be worried, not to stress. Matthew 6, 22. And now all of us can see that all of this flows together. Because he's not changed subjects here. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, or as some translations say, good, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, what does that mean if your eye be evil? Can my physical eye be evil? It means what you see and how you see it. It makes so much difference how we see things. How you see things can make a difference between you being panicking or you being at peace. And yet, nothing has changed in the situation. It's just how you see it. The scripture says in Hebrews 2.14, it says that Jesus became a partaker. He became a partaker of flesh and blood so that he through death might destroy him that he that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through all their lifetime were subject to bondage to the fear of death. See, fear makes us uh, bindable. Fear paralyzes. The devil is not what um, as powerful as he wants us to believe. He can't do anything in our life without my cooperation. The cooperation that I give him is my thinking. 
he cannot work in my life without me allowing to think on the suggestions he's giving me. He wants me to believe that he can that, 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 that he can that he is stronger, that he can do all things, but he can't. So we need to remember that God is greater. The peace that's on the inside of us is greater, is bigger, is stronger, is mightier than the fear that is out in the world. Fear standing on its own can't do anything. Fear is activated when I receive it, when I think on it, when I believe it. But as long as I don't give a foothold to fear and I allow the peace of God that's within me, stirring my, my, my peace that's in me, that is given to me because Jesus said, it, my peace I give you, my peace I give unto you. The same peace that he had when he walked here on earth that he still is and he still has is the same peace that he's given us. I cannot have peace without his word. I cannot have peace without his relationship. But the peace that he's given us is the same peace that he had when he was here on earth. It's the same one that he wants us to utilize. Is the one that he wants to, us to, to work with and to behave with. So rather than, than being all upset, rather than being all stressed out, Rather than be all annoyed, let's just choose to have the peace of God and to put on the peace of God that surpasses all understanding because the peace of God will protect us, will guard our hearts and our minds. And the treasures that Jesus is talking about should be the treasure of his word, should be the treasure of his promises. We need to yield to his promises. We need to trust in him in everything that we do, in everything that we are, in everything that we have. And we not need to be afraid. He will teach us what's important. There's no other reality. There's nothing greater and bigger than the promises of God Almighty. The promises that he's given us, the promises that are for us, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And every morning when we wake up, we got to wake up before we even put our feet on the ground. Just thank God for the day. Thank God that it is the day that he has made. And thank God that we're able to put on his peace. We're able to rule and reign here on earth as he did because of his peace and his mercies. And thank God the peace is available to all of us. Let's all walk in that peace of God. Let's all be in that peace of God that he wants us to be. And we have to let him know that we are convinced. We have to convince ourselves. That there is a real God. You have to convince yourself that there is a God that wants peace for your life, for my life. And we have to tell him every morning and every night before we go to bed, Father, I am convinced that you love me and you want me to wear your peace and be at peace no matter what I see, no matter what I hear, no matter how I feel, you want me at peace. As long as we are releasing and giving things to him, he will take care of us. Stuff that we is out of our hands, that we can't even comprehend, things that we can't even do. If God has called us to do something, I can't expect to do it on my own strength. God, my Heavenly Father, that says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. And he's calling me to do something. I cannot expect to do it by myself because first and foremost, 
his way is higher. His thinking is higher. So I have to meditate on the word. I have to get my revelation higher to the level that he is at. Meaning you have to, you, the treasures that were on earth, we have to leave them and cleave to him so that we can see things exactly like he wants us to see. Get our eyes, get our focus off of the things of the natural and get into the things of God. Having our eyes focused on Jesus and letting him know that we are convinced that not only he wants us to be at his peace, at peace with him, and he wants us to carry that peace with us, but we are convinced that he loves us. We are convinced that he wants us to have the best. We are convinced that he wants us, as much as we want to succeed and as much as we want the victory, he wants us to have that victory. He's already given it to us. So we have to thank him and say, thank you, Father, for helping me to see what my responsibility is. And my responsibility is to think on that list that he's giving us. He's given me a list on what to think. He's given me his words. I don't have to come up with my own words. I have his words to speak. I can't even, I have no excuse to say, well, I don't know what to say. We have his word. We can say what he says. Jesus said it. I don't say anything I don't hear my father say. And I don't do anything I don't see my father do. So. He says, follow that. So if we have nothing to say, why don't we say what God says? Why don't we say what Jesus said? There's a lot to say when it comes to God's word. He's given us his word. And we got to thank him for that. Thank him for his word. Thank you, Father, for your word. And thank you that I have a responsibility. My responsibility is to put on the word. And as I put on the word, God's responsibility is to reveal it to me. And then I get a revelation through the Holy Spirit. And he will tell us what house we're gonna live in, what kind of car we're gonna be driving, what kind of building we want for our ministry. I mean, everything. He'll reveal things to us through his words. And we can start declaring and claiming from our heavenly bank account that's what we have that's what we speak and that's what we declare because we have a heavenly bank account that we can claim an amount of money to be released through our faith and whatever it is that is needed and required god says i will supply all of your needs according to the riches because it's, it's in our account it's coming from our heavenly account and it will manifest in the natural. So we declare, the Bible says, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, you believe, you receive, and you shall have. So we need to do that. We need to come before God, and we need to repent for our behavior. We need to repent for, for our unbelief and our doubt, and for having a double mind. Uh, yes, no, maybe so. And we need to just, just refocus and say, this is what God said. If God said it, that is yes, and that's an amen. I will put it on. Yes, sir, you said it. I have no desires to not believe your word because you are a father that you do not lie. And um, we will not be believers, unbelievers. We will believe everything the word says to, to believe. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that um, the Word of God gets will accomplish everything that He has sent His Word to do for our behalf, in our behalf. And we got to praise Him. We got to thank Him, and we 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 got to we got to thank Him because He loves us, and we want to we want to be confident that He loves us. We have to be confident that there is a God. And he, as much as we want health and strength and vitality and finances, he
he wants it more than we want. Let's just remember Philippians 4.10. And here on Philippians 4.10, this is the greatest expression of love is giving. I mean, if we go back to even John 3.16, what did he say in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's giving. He is a giving father. If he gave his only begotten son for us, what is a house to him? What is $100,000 to him? What is $10,000 to him? It's nothing to him, but it may seem huge for us because we probably haven't seen it. We probably haven't touched it. So we need to renew our mind. We need to work on our mind because of our past experiences that we've never probably seen it or, or we've seen that our family could not ever amount or reach to that because of what they said or they heard in their past. That is a lie. That is a lie. We are living in the truth. If anybody said you, 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 you will never amount to that, and you're living for God, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But if we're not living for God on our own, we will not get very far because everything that we need to obtain here is through Christ. I can't do it on my own. I can't do it by myself. I depend totally on God every single day. We all need to do that. We all need to depend on, on his word. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So we got to keep them. And where do we keep them? We keep them in our hearts. And so we need to make room in our hearts for the word of God. And we need to have the word of God in abundance. That's why we cannot allow our hearts to get to be troubled because then we are not making room for the love of God. We are having an abundance of trouble and there's no room for the love of God. So let's release all the troubles. Let's get rid of all of them. Let's choose to have the love of God and have the love of God in abundance. So out of the abundance of that heart comes out of our mouth. And that's the expression that we give what's in the abundance of our heart. And we want to show to the people, we want to show to the world the abundance that's in our heart, the promises of God, and the reality that, that we're living in. Our reality is the truth, which is the Word of God. We will not fail. We cannot fail. Love never fails. And God never fails. And if love never fails, and if God never fails, and we are in God, and God is in us, we can never fail. We have a Father. The watches over us, protect us, guards us, and he promises that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we just want to say thank you to God. That's just every morning when we get up, but also at night for everything that he was able to accomplish for us. Everything that he's bringing to our path for the divine protection that we were able to come back home safely, for places that are still open for us to have dinner, to have lunch, food on our table. We got to thank God for the people that we met, the wonderful friends that we have, the families that we have. We have to have a heart of gratitude. We got to thank him for the peace that he's given us because when things are going crazy, we have an anchor for our soul which is his peace, the peace that God gave to Jesus to give to us. And know that Jesus is also God himself. And he came to show us the Father. So now we are not fatherless. We are not hopeless. We are not helpless. We're not peaceless. We are peaceful. And we need to stir it up. We need to put it on. We need to activate it activated we need to walk in it we need to become it and be successful because that guards our heart the peace of god guards our heart
purifies our mind because it surpasses all understanding. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this program on the Gospel America channel. You can download our app from the App Store or from Google Play. And again, thanks for watching on the Gospel America channel. Christian Television is here. The Gospel America channel streaming worldwide on Roku, Fire TV, and online at www.gospelamerica.net. Pastors and business owners broadcast your message or business on Gospel America by calling 203-410-6053. It's affordable and cost-effective. Call now to air your broadcasts on the Gospel America channel. You're watching America's newest Christian television network. The Gospel America channel is the nation's newest worldwide streaming Christian television network, similar to TBN. We're based right here in San Angelo, our wonderful home. We broadcast 24-7 globally on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. You can watch our live programming by downloading our app from the App Store or from Google Play or by visiting our website at www.gospelamerica.net. You can also watch our programs on video on demand. The Gospel America Channel produces television shows, commercials, corporate presentations, documentaries, and streams live events. When you're ready to broadcast or advertise at home or around the world, let us be your choice. Need video production? Email us at gospelamericachannel at gmail.com or call us at 203-410-6053. Be sure to watch Victory in the Word with Bishop James Bishop, 8 a.m. daily on the Gospel America channel. Be sure to tune in to the Dr. Lucy Gonzalez Ministries daily at 8.30 p.m. Central, 9.30 p.m. Eastern on the Gospel America channel on Roku, Fire TV, and online at www.gospelamerica.net. Be sure to tune in to the Dr. Lucy Gonzalez Ministries daily, 8.30 p.m. Central, 9.30 p.m. Eastern on the Gospel America Channel. You're watching America's newest Christian television network. We're the Gospel America Channel. There is a new exciting adventure taking place at the Way of the Cross Church of Christ in Capitol Heights, Maryland, under the leadership of presiding bishop Alfonso D. Brooks, changing the lives of people across the nation and around the world like the Pentecostal Apostolic Fellowship at Bible Way Church in Washington, D.C. The Word of God being preached, taught, as the saints of God are trained, equipped, and encouraged to make disciples of others. This is the legacy of the presiding bishop of the Way of the Cross Church of Christ, Bishop Alfonso D. Brooks, sharing God's love from a heritage of great men, from his father, H.C. Brooks, who was the founder, to the Mother Church on 9th and D in Washington, D.C. This is the legacy of a people of God under the leadership of Bishop Alfonso Brooks at the Way of the Cross Church of Christ. 
broadcasting to every nation worldwide. We are the Gospel America Network. Catch the vision www.gospelamerica.net